1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. I'm going to read some scripture, then you may be seated after we read these couple things of scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. Then also get 2 Timothy chapter number 3 ready. It's just one book over. All right. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 and then 2 Timothy chapter number 3. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in the house. Amen. I'm glad for the merciful grace of God. Church, don't ever take it for granted. Don't ever take the grace and the mercy of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Listen to me, church. You're not ignorant to the fact that Jesus is our Savior, and His grace is here tonight. You are uh, the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Then turn over to 2 Timothy. Chapter number 3, beginning with verse number 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Anybody read the paper? Anybody watch the news? Perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such, from such turn away. Someone say amen to the reading of the Word of God. You may be seated. Listen to me, church. There's some scripture that I want to also bring to your attention. You don't have to turn to them, but it's found in the book of John. The book of John, chapter number 4. There's a story there that you can read later on if you want, but it talks about the woman that went to the well to fetch water. You see, I want to tell you something. We've been reading, I just read you two scriptures that warn us about the end times, and truly, Jesus is coming, church. Prepare yourselves. Jesus is coming. If you're not ready, by all means, get your heart and your life ready because God's mercy is still falling today. But I want to know, and I, I, I struggled with this sermon because I thought, Lord Jesus, are you sure this is what, what you want to talk about tonight? But Papa Johnson had a saying that he always told me time and time and time again. I would get in the car to drive him somewhere, and before you know it, before we'd get there, he'd always say this sentence. He always said, life is so daily. Life is so daily. John remarks in that story about the woman with the pail that went to fetch water. A woman of Samaria, you can read it for yourselves, came to draw water. Now listen, this wasn't nothing new to her. She did it every day. She'd take her little pail, go to the well, and fetch water. But listen, after, listen to this. A woman of Samaria, after five failed marriages, her trust levels are demolished in her life, and her self-worth is at zero. After, listen to that. But after beginning the conversation, when she got to the well, he, she met a man, Jesus. But after beginning the conversation with Jesus, brick by brick, he began to take her life down the walls, the, tear down the walls of her life right before her. That she was always hiding behind by every day 
going to fetch water. All of us in this room have built walls that we hide behind. So many put on an air about you, but yet, and you seem, you seem to put on an air that everything is fine, yet you've built a wall that everything is not so fine. We may pretend with others that we have it all together, when reality, we do not. We have built walls, having it all together, when in, when in reality, we're broken, we're damaged, we're scarred, we're scattered, we're confused. We're worried, we're in fear. We pretend that we have it all together while we're crying out on the inside of not knowing what to do at times or, or where to turn to at times or how am I going to make it through another day at times. Yet, in this wonderful story related to us by John, we find an encounter of a life-changing experience. When this woman at the well met Jesus, unlike all the other men that she had met. He addressed her real need as they began to talk. You see, there are many here tonight or today, just like this woman who comes to the well, like she had so many other times, probably every day to get water. Water is essential in life to meet her desire for thirst. Yet, during the conversation with Jesus, he spoke, you listen, go get your husband. She replies, I have no husband. Jesus replies back to her, you have had five husbands. And you aren't married to the one that you're living with now. Can you just imagine what she was thinking when he looked past through her, this wall she had built, and realized this man Spoke, to, spoke right past all that he saw to her real need that she had in her life. Because she was weak. She was getting into situations that left her wounded and abandoned. Those wounds cannot be healed by going from one relationship to another, to another, to another, to another. You see, listen. We've all had the daily routines of life going to things only that last for a while. We go here for, from, with our pail going here and there trying to satisfy our needs. To the same old things every day hoping that it will quench our thirst. We take our pail to our job hoping that's going to help us. We take our pail to our friends every day hoping that's going to happen or to the family, or to money, or to drugs, or to possessions, thinking that's going to satisfy and meet. Yet, that day, that day, this, at this wonderful time, that wonderful, matchless grace of God, that day, in her daily routine of life, is going to that well. She was about to have an encounter of a lifetime, with grace, with mercy, with love, with peace, with the answer, with all the help she will need, with fulfillment in her life. She was not going to just fetch water. She was going to grab hold of the living water, Jesus Christ. She had an encounter with grace and mercy and love. You see, her answer wasn't another man. She had already tried that five different times. Her answer was meeting the man of all men, Jesus Christ the Savior. The man that already knew her condition before she got there. He already knew her lifestyle. He already knew all about her faults and her failures. Already knew about all of her, all of her failures in life. Already knew all of that. Already knew that if she would ask, he could give her what she really needed if she would just ask of him. You see, I know you might think, Brother Gary, you're talking about a woman that's lived a horrible life and coming. This is a this is a Wednesday night crowd. Honey, no, sometimes I'm here to tell you, sometimes people that feel church services every time the doors are open are still hurting and longing for the real water of Jesus that can satisfy. This woman didn't need another man. You see, he, he was the man of forgiveness. He was the man for help. 
He was the man for true cleansing she needed. What an encounter at that same time. She went every day to that day, but that day was going to be different because she was going to find a difference in the water she needed. What an encounter at that well. Jesus walked, listen to this, Jesus walked miles out of his way to speak to a lonely, broken, bruised woman at a well. He not only walked to that well, he waited there until she showed up. Was he waiting for some famous personality? No. Was he waiting for some king to come by? No. Was he waiting for some rich man to come by? No. Listen, he waited for a no-named woman, five times divorced, a promiscuous woman with a bad reputation. Everybody in town knew about her. She had a live-in boyfriend. She was what the world might consider trash. But one drop of Jesus' precious blood can transform all trash into healing. Amen. Can I tell you tonight, when the world looks at your past, when others remind you of your past, when your family has been affected by your past, when your friends, sadly today, even the church friends are looking at your past all the time. Jesus, the Savior, the Deliverer, has got his eyes on your future. You see, in his eyes, every weed is a potential rose in the eyes of Jesus. Every piece of trash he can recycle. You see, Jesus didn't see her as bad. He saw her as lost. You see, there's a big difference. I'm here to tell you, I'm glad that Jesus one day reached down to the trash of my life and picked me up and recycled me. I can look across this room and I see many lives that have served the Lord that where Jesus has brought you from to where you are today. I'm glad he's still in the recycling business in this church world today. You see, Jesus can still change a prostitute into a princess. He can change a drunkard into a disciple. He can change a sinner into a saint. Aren't you glad for Jesus tonight? Listen, church, the Lord did not turn away from this woman. He waited for her. Yet today, it seems some are turned away by the church. You're not good enough for the church. Your reputation is bad. You don't have enough money to be in the church. You're not of our statue at this church. I'm glad to know that Jesus said, all that wants to come can come to the grace of God. I'm glad that somebody called me to an altar prayer at a church service. Somebody, I'm glad somebody let me go to church. You see, Jesus is not turned away. Many times the world may turn away, turn their back on you, turn away from you. But yet I'm here to tell you, the Lord will never turn. He is not turned away from your sin. No matter how bad you may seem like you are tonight or how far you've gone, Jesus is not turned away by your sin. Jesus is not turned away from your past. You say, Brother Gary, you don't know what I've done. Jesus is not turned away by your past. Jesus is not turned about how poor you might be or even how rich you may be or how intelligent you may be or how illiterate you may be. You may be. Jesus is not turned away. Jesus is not turned away about how bad you might think you are. Or Jesus is not turned away about how good you think you are. Because we all must go through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus is not turned around about how bound you may be in this life. Some, there may be some that all you all look all dressed up and you look wonderful and you look nice, but yet on the inside you seem bound. But Jesus is not afraid for you. He knows. He knows. He knows how drunk you may be. He knows how high you may be. You see, he knows how black you may be or how white you are or how brown you are, how, how yellow you are. He's not turned away from that. Every single person in this room tonight is in this place at this time because God had something for you. 
You see, I began to think about that. I said, oh, Lord, are you sure that you saw this Wednesday night when I would be standing behind that pulpit preaching to the people that come on a Wednesday night? Are you sure that the God said, I know, I know who's going to be there. This woman was coming for water, a necessity, a daily necessity of life. But tonight, because of life situations are hard to bear, you need to come drink from the water of Jesus Christ. You're struggling with burdens so heavy you cannot carry them any longer. You have families struggling to make ends meet all the time. But Jesus is here. He wants you to take the water, the living water. Financial difficulties have you stripped apart, have you strapped. You don't know which way to turn. Questions that seems to have no answers and you keep asking the questions. Sicknesses that overtake you. Pain, worry, heartache. Life is so daily. Life is so daily. Yet, in spite of all that he offers at this well, first assembly of God, pretend this is the well. There's no real beauty about all this well. I mean, it's nice, it's wonderful, but come on. Nothing, nothing is prestigious about this well or this building. There's nothing fancy about the things at this well. Buckets of water from a leak that I tripped over tonight going from one office to the other. I didn't see the stupid buckets in the, in the middle of the thing and I knocked them all over and water went everywhere. Huh. I didn't see them. So there's nothing fancy. There's leaks in this building. There's cracks in the floor. There's, there's nicks in the walls if you look for them. Huh. There's lights out at times. You can look around probably tonight and find one. Nothing really is out, out of the ordinary about this well. Yet, the Lord knew someone was coming to this well tonight, needing water of the Spirit, food of the Word, precious Word of God. Someone come to this well tonight needing hope for tomorrow. Oh, I know you look like the you look like a nice crowd tonight. You're all dressed up, but I'm here to tell you, down inside, you're longing for hope, for answers. Help for situations that you see are impossible, that you're not going to make it through. Healing from your sicknesses and wounds from church members or church people or people out in general or heartaches you're facing. You come to this well tonight. Someone here tonight came broken from the cares of life. You've come broken in maybe your relationships. You're bruised by family. You're bruised by friends. You're bruised by life itself. You're helpless, not knowing what to do or which way to turn. You're hurting from all the cares of life. You're confused about tomorrow. What's going to happen? What's going to happen tomorrow? What about our future? What's going to happen? No matter your pain, so deep sometimes you can't even explain it. You're hurt so bad that you just want to give up at times. Marital problems that you think are never, ever going to work out. Hatred over past hurts and past problems. Strife with people on the job or even in your family. Family issues. Maybe you're facing strife. Maybe it's habits that keep you bound and locked up in chains. Maybe it's tears of pain that nobody else knows about. That you come to church and you put a smile on. The minute you leave, you cry with tears. I remember a young man that used to attend this church years and years ago when I first came. I worked on him for months and months. And this young man, I talked to him and said, Brother Gary, I'll be honest with you. Every time I go home from school, I go into my room, I lay on my bed, and I just take my hand and do this. I said, what do you mean? He said, I took my little mask off and set it beside me. Because every day I go to school, i got to be the cool you know, I'm the, I'm the one that everybody comes to for the drugs and this and that, all these things. Well, then when I come home, I take the mask off, and I begin to fear about tomorrow. What is your fears? What are the things that's haunting you? Habits that keep you bound. Tears of pain that nobody else knows about. Questions with no answers in sight. Financial problems so huge you think it's impossible to overcome. Alcohol bondage that you can't even conquer. 
You say, Brother Gary, this is a Wednesday night crowd. I'm here to tell you, listen, statistics will tell you that you'll be surprised how many church-going people are bound in alcohol and drugs. Drug bondage. But listen to me. Oh, Brother Gary, I, not alcohol, not drugs. No, sir. But what about bitterness? It's eating you up inside, eating you alive. It's eating you up, bitterness. Immorality you can't seem to get through. Listen, the Lord is still at the well waiting on you. Empty lives, empty dreams, empty hopes, empty tomorrows, empty eyes. Listen to me. After her encounter with Jesus at the well, the Word of God tells us she left her water pot. She left it. Listen, come to the well and then leave the water pot of all your sins and failures. Leave the water pot of the past that you deal with every day. Leave the water pot of worries and fear. Leave all the problems behind you. Leave them at the well. Questions you might have. Mistakes that you just can't seem to get over. Leave them at the well. All the tossing and turning at night of what's going to happen in the world or the church or what's going on in my own life. Leave them behind. Leave them at the well. All the guilt you may be feeling inside of past mistakes. Leave them at the well. You see, the water pot of sins, failures, the past, worries, problems, questions, mistakes, tossing and turning. Listen, leave them at the well. The Lord will give you new life, new hope, and a new water pot if you're just asking. The Lord is our source tonight. He's waiting on you. Have the cares of life, the daily struggles, situations, questions you might have beyond your control. Life is so dry and barren. Take your little empty pail and come to the well where Jesus is waiting for you. You see, I begin to think about this. Are you tonight in this sanctuary, troubled in your mind? Leave that water pot. Just take that water pot soda and just leave it there. And begin to just rejoice in the Lord. Say, I know the peace speaker. I know him by name. I know the peace speaker. He controls the wind and the waves when he says, peace, be still. Let me tell you something. Leave that water pot at the well. Are you, are you brokenhearted and all alone? He's as close as the mention of his name. All you got to do is call on Jesus. He'll help you. Or you seem like you're at the end of your rope. You can begin to cry out to the Lord, Jesus, we're depending on you. Oh, Jesus, I'm depending on you. Oh, Jesus, I'm depending on you. I'm depending on you, Lord, to see us through. Are you hopeless and all alone? It seems nobody's there. You can always say, Jesus. My hope is in you. You see, Jesus is our only hope tonight, church. Are you sinking in sin and despair? Lift up your hands. Begin to say, love lifted me. (laughs) Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Love lifted me, oh, love lifted me, (laughs) love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. (laughs) Are you sinking? Are you try? Have you tried everything and nothing seems to work? Listen, friend. Try Jesus, he never fails. All evil 
His love prevails in sunshine or stormy gale. Try Jesus, he never fails. <laughs> Are you alone? Friends have forsaken you. You feel abandoned in life. What a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling you, he is our friend. Amen. Listen to me, church. Water is a daily necessity. Daily she went to the well to get water. Every day she got water. It's all used up. She goes back for some more every single day. But aren't you glad that this water that Jesus gives, the Lord gives us, will never, ever dry up. His mercy never runs out. His love never gives up. His strength never fades. His joy never ends. His provisions never cease. His compassions never stop. Listen, his reach is never too sharp. His ways never change. And his grace abounds forever. Can somebody praise the Lord tonight? I'm glad for Jesus. You see, I know you're the Wednesday night crowd. But I'm here to tell you. You may be, I'm telling you, I know situations in lives sometimes seem impossible to get through. But Jesus is here tonight so that you can find the peace of God in every turmoil and situation you're facing in your life tonight. Would you please stand all across this building, bow your heads. Listen to me. I struggled with this message and said, Lord, are you sure? <laughs> but I know there's some situations in life that seem sometimes life is just so daily. But Lord, so is your grace. So is your mercy, so is your strength, so is your help, and so is your source. I want us to sing it. I know the peace speaker. I know the peace speaker. Hallelujah. And as I sing, we sing this song tonight. If you need special prayer, maybe you just need to come and say, Lord, I pretend like you're coming to the well to meet Jesus tonight. There's some things in your life you need to get through. You need the Lord's help and grace. He's here tonight. I know the, the peace, peace speaker. Come and stand across this room if you need special prayer tonight, church. Name. He's waiting at the well. He's waiting at the well. Oh, yeah. I, I know, know the peace, peace speaker. speaker. Hallelujah. He, he controls the wind and the rain. rain. Ah, oh, they have to obey. Come on, church. You need something from the Lord tonight. You need to take a drink of the living water of the Lord Jesus. Come to the well tonight. Jesus is there. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, sing it again, Sister Katie. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands up. Lift your hands up toward heaven tonight. Begin to praise Him. Oh, Lord. Oh, I know the peace. Speaker. I need some ladies to come pray over here on this far side. I, I need some ladies over here, please. Some prayer warriors to come and pray. I need some over here on this side. Hallelujah. I need some right here. I need some ladies. Come on. Come and find someone to pray with tonight. Hallelujah. He controls the wind and the rain. Ah, they have to obey. Oh, Lord, I'm glad I know the peace speaker. If you need healing in your body tonight, if you'd like for us to pray for you, if you want to come and stand right over here on this side, if you need healing in your body, and you want us to pray for you tonight, come and stand on this side right here. If you need healing tonight. Oh, yeah. I know him by name. Oh, Lord, I know the peace speaker. He controls the wind and the rain. Can I have 
have some ladies come. Lay your hands on Sister Sharon, please, tonight. Let's pray. Could you come tonight? Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, they have to obey. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Pray for Sharon, pray for Paul, God, that you touch both, oh, Lord Jesus. Strengthen us, grace, Lord. Hallelujah. Healing, Jesus. Healing tonight. Come on, church, begin to pray. Oh, Lord, we're at the well tonight. Jesus, needy healing needs to be met, oh, God. Lord Jesus, tonight, oh, God, you're able, Lord, nothing's impossible with you tonight, oh, God. Nothing's impossible. You're the healer tonight. You can speak peace to every situation in life, oh, God. All the fears, the worries, the doubts, oh, God. Hallelujah. He says peace. They have to obey. I'm glad I know the peace speaker. Yes, I know. God, we bind together right now in Jesus' name. We bind together in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We lay it down, God.